Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Zach and I make things for Ableton Live. And today I wanted to walk through a device that I've created called Nobbler 4. Uh, Nobbler 4 is something that I made in the pursuit of the best way to manipulate parameters in a live set. I want to control surface with an array of assignable controls that are always displaying the correct value. So non-motorized knobs and faders are out. Each control should be labeled with its parameter name, device name, and track name, as well as be colored according to the given track. Assignment should be as simple as touching an unassigned control, no mapping modes to toggle in and out of. I wanted to be able to work on multiple songs and have the custom layout for that song loaded with the song. I should also be able to interact with all of the parameters of the currently selected device without using the mouse or keyboard. Nobbler does all of this, giving you a parameter-focused control surface for Ableton Live on your iPad. So to get started, we need to install it. So here's what we do. Um, you can go to the link in the description of this video, which is the GitHub project page for this open source project. And the best way to download it is through the releases page here on the right side. So we click that. Uh, we see that v3 is the latest release, and so we can download the zip file there. After downloading it, extract the zip file. And in that folder, you'll find a touch OSC layout and the AMXD, the device for Ableton Live. So step number one is let's send the touch OSC layout to the iPad. And I'll use AirDrop for that. So I'll just drag it to AirDrop and hold, and then drop it on my iPad. And now we see the iPad has received it and uh, it's opened in the Files app and I can just tap Open and Touch OSC. And here we have it. Uh, so we're gonna pause on the iPad for there and now we'll go to the computer, back to Downloads, and we're gonna drag the AMXD to the user library in Ableton Live. So we'll just grab it, drop it in user library, and here it is. And then we'll drop it on a track in our set. Now we need to go back to the iPad and just set up the connection to the computer. To do that, we'll click the chain icon here um, on the OSC tab in the connections page, uh, tap browse next to host, and you should see your computer running Ableton Live here. In my case, it's called music.local. And then pick the IPv4 address, um, that one there. And we need to make sure to set the receive port to 2347. You can really use any port you want, but let's just use that for this setup example. And then we'll hit done. And then we'll hit the play icon here in the top. And now the template is running full screen. Back in Nobbler in Ableton Live, we can click rescan net. And here we see the iPad showed up in this drop down list. It's the only one for me and we've got confirmation of the host name and port here. So now we can test to make sure that it's working properly. So let's go to, uh, for example, this kick drum track, and I'll click a parameter here, and we can see on the iPad at the very bottom, uh, this thing, this slider called current param knob became active. It tells us the, the path to this parameter, its current value, its minimum and maximum value, and I can move this slider on the iPad, and now I'm controlling that parameter on the screen in Ableton Live. And this slider in the bottom is always just showing you the current parameter, the current selected parameter. Okay, so that's the current param knob functionality of Nobbler, but let's really get into what the value of Nobbler is here. And this is the real big idea that I wanted to create. The way I work on music is there's generally some manageable subset of parameters of various instruments in the live set that I wanna be, be able to control, maybe live. And so Nobbler gives you a place to collect all of those parameters together on your iPad screen, label them, color them the same as the tracks, and lets you perform them with all 10 of your fingers. So let's make sure the Nobbler tab is selected in Touch OSC, and let's check it out. So the first thing we can do is map some parameters. So I have this kick drum device selected, I'll just click on a parameter here in this uh, instrument rack and I'll just tap a fader that's unassigned in, in Nobbler. I didn't go into any mapping mode, I just tapped one that's unassigned and that's how you assign it. And so you can see it turned blue, I get the parameter device and track name and I can move this 
and it moves that parameter. And so we could map a couple of others in that device, and maybe we could go to this device and map a couple of others. And we'll go to one more and we'll map a couple of others. So we'll do this, uh, uh, we'll put it down here, uh, these three. And so let's say, oh, uh, let's say you want to unmap something. And that's as easy as just tapping this X up in the corner and then tapping a slider that you want to unmap and tap the X to exit the unmapping mode. The other way you can unmap a device, and so we'll just map one here to unmap, is to do it in the Nobbler device itself. So if we go back to the track where I added Nobbler, I can see all of the assignments that I've made here, including the names and color coding, and I can click this little X to unmap this parameter from this slot. And now it's unmapped. Another thing that we can control in the Nobbler device itself is the slider ranges. And let me show you what that means. So I have a utility device, and this is on my kick drum track. Maybe I just want to be able to pull the kicks out and then bring them back to where they were. Um, and so I'll put a utility device on that track. I'll click the gain parameter there and I'll just assign it to this fader. And you can see that the full range is to plus 35 and minus infinity dB. Um, but I just want to constrain it to end at zero dB. And so the way I can do that is to go back to the Nobbler device. Here we've got our, our gain control. And in this case, if I just set the maximum range to 50%, now we're at zero dB with the slider all the way at the top. And then we have just the range that we want to control in that parameter. You probably know in Ableton Live, you can double click a parameter to reset it to its default value. You can also double tap a slider in Nobbler to reset it to its default value. So that would give you a really easy way, for instance, if you had pulled out the, for example, the kick drum in your song, and you want to bring it back at just the right level, you just double tap and now you're back at the default. One of the, one of the big deals with Nobbler for me is the fact that I always see the correct information on the iPad. And that's not just the values that are displayed, but also the parameter name, the device name, and the track name, along with the colors of things. And Nobbler tracks all of that in real time. So for instance, for this blue drum track, let's say I wanted to make it yellow, I just change the color of the track and immediately all of the sliders in Nobbler reflect that new color. Similarly, I can rename this to kick drum, and now we see that the name is updated everywhere that it's on the iPad screen. One shortcut uh, that I built into Nobbler is that you can jump to a track by tapping a track name on the iPad screen. And so I could just tap this TALJ8 track name, and then it selects it in my live set. And this gives you a fast way to bounce around and, and visit the most important tracks in your live set. And so far I've mapped a few parameters here and Nobbler gives you two tabs of 16 parameter sliders to map in your live set. Okay, the third tab that we haven't talked about yet is this blue hand tab. And well, what is that? Well, in Ableton Live, the device that your control surface is controlling is indicated with a blue hand icon here, and that's, that's where the blue hand name comes in. Blue hand gives you fingertip access to every parameter in the currently selected device across pages of 16 parameters. No need to go to the mouse or the keyboard. As you select different devices, the blue hand display is automatically updated with color, track, and device name information. If a device has more than 16 parameters, for example, this base device, you can page through the different banks with the buttons up here. And just like with Nobbler, double tapping a parameter will reset it to its default value. One tool that I find very useful in combination with Blue Hand is using racks to limit the number of parameters that are exposed here. So for instance, in this base instrument, we've got four pages of parameters, and they're kind of scattered all over the place. Um, but if I group this into an instrument rack and turn on the macro knobs, I can then map the most important parameters to me to macro knobs. And you can see as I'm doing this, they're showing up on the iPad screen. I can then save this rack and then recall it. And then I always have my most important parameters for this instrument at my fingertips. One case that you'll probably come up on uh, that you may or may not know about is, well, how do we expose parameters from VST or AU devices 
For instance, we've got this uh, TALJ8, which is a synth that I really, really adore. Um, you can click this configure button in the device header, and this lets you select the parameters that you want to expose from that VST into Ableton Live. And so I'm just gonna start out by deleting all of these. With the configure button selected, you can then click on parameters in your VST, and then they show up both in Live's device display and also on the blue hand tab. Click configure again, now I've exited that mode and I'm ready to go. Uh, I can also right click the title bar and choose save as default configuration and now every time I load this device it's gonna have this parameter set up. So then I can start to develop a muscle memory for the parameters on the blue hand tab. Another great live feature that I think doesn't get enough attention is the ability to assign keyboard shortcuts to device. And so that in combination with blue hand gives you an amazing productivity boost where you can visit your most important devices and manipulate their parameters with a single keystroke. No need to hunt around with the mouse pointer. Let me show you. So if we hit Command K, now we're in keyboard mapping mode. I can click the, the title of a device and then tap a key on the keyboard. So in this case for the J8, I'm gonna give it the letter J. You see a little J show up here and we also see key J mapped to uh, TALJ8, select device. And then let's go visit our kick drum. We'll click there and hit K. And then let's visit our bass and we'll click here and click B. And then Command K to exit this mode. And now I can hit uh, J for the J8, and we see the parameters on blue hand. K for the kick drum, and now I see my parameters on blue hand, and B to go to the bass, and here we are there. The second to the last feature that we'll look at today is this toggle record enable button. Um, what that does is just disables, even if you have the track armed for recording, it sets the input to no input. What that allows you to do is, even if there's MIDI data in that track, you can hit record, and record automation moves from the knobbler, and it will record that automation but not overwrite the MIDI data. If you've been down this path, you know the frustration, just having a single button here so I don't have to go hunt for these little menus and, and pick no input and remember what it was set to, or arm record a dummy track or something like that. I can stay in flow, just hit this button and, and go. The last feature we'll look at here is the refresh display button. And here's, here's an example of when you might use that. Let's say you've, uh, you're doing something else with your iPad. Let's say we change a track, we go back to touch OSC, the bass instrument was still selected here, even though we changed it in Ableton Live because the touch OSC was in the background, it doesn't get the, it doesn't get the updates from Live. If I just tap refresh display, now it synchronizes with Ableton Live. Okay, so that's it for the Nobbler 4 overview. It's been a game changer for me in how I interact with devices in Ableton Live. I can use my fingers more and the mouse pointer less. So maybe you can think of some ways you might use it in your live or your studio work. Let me know with a comment below and tell me what you're doing with it. And I'd love to hear any feedback, any issues, problems, anything that needs to be documented better. Just send me an email. I'll put my email in the description or you can open an issue on the GitHub page. Anyhow, happy noblin. Bye.